Oh, God, do I feel rough. Just, just remind me next time I party with you, make sure my freaking calendar has nothing in it for a month so I can recover. Way too old for that. But tell you what, what a load of fun that was, eh? Strippers, money, and gambling, and lots of alcohol. So, yeah, <laughs> I don't know how you do it. But how nice was that? Of the uh, chairman of Alrian to give us a little send off thank you party gift and a lend us his private jet to take us to our brand new club. God, I feel a bit, feel a bit tender. Getting too old, man. Too, too old to do that. Anyway, but no, no, we are not staying in America. Mate, I can guarantee you one thing on this road to anywhere adventure. We are not going to be managing in the MLS. Not a sniff. Been burned with that too many times. No, we keep in America for holidays and parties only, my friend. But I have got us a new job. And you are going to be the chief corn placement officer at this new job. But I want to challenge myself, like I said, in the car. And I have gone left field. I have shocked the world. I've turned down a good job to take this job. I don't know how happy you're going to be. I don't know. Hopefully you are. I can't wait. I've even got us a part-time job to win a bit of extra money on our days off, which I think you're going to hate, but tough shit. We need to keep that money coming in. We're definitely going to need money coming in where we're going. Just remember, just don't forget as well, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, yeah? Yeah? Cheers, bud. No, no, we're not going to South America. No. Far East? No, <laughs> no. Not, 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 not Europe either. We're kind of going not too far from where we've been, really. Although it is very different. Although I did moan about Qatar being a bit too modern, not having enough culture. This place is ran to the rafters with culture. But obviously, I was way too drunk last night to make you a little envelope and put it next to you to let you see where we're going. So I think I'll just tell you. Do you want to know? We're going. So here we are at the Aswan Stadium, home of Aswan Sports Club, or as the fans call them, the Nile Crocodiles. Now, why have I chose this club? Well, they only survived last year by a point. No money, ain't got nothing. This is going to be a challenge. This is the challenge I'm cherishing. Now, we're going to go straight in here because I'm not really organised our accommodation just yet. Although we have kind of done a deal with the British research team you're doing a bit of an archaeological dig. They said we can stay with them for a year as long as we help out. It won't be crap. Digging for pots might be fun. We might even find a mummy, which I think would be amazing. But anyway, we'll have a look where we're staying later on. We have got so much work to do. We need to go in there and get started and find out exactly what we're dealing with. Welcome to Aswan SC in Egypt, the Egyptian Premier League, a team that's got no history, a team that's not really ever achieved anything and a team that only just survived the drop last year. And I said to you, I wanted to go a bit left field and I think I have. Um, I looked at a lot of jobs. There's a lot of good jobs out there. I got offered some good jobs actually. Um, at teams, one was McAfee Haifa, where I could have gone and they were in the Euro European Conference League. Big team, I could have gone in for a season or two and probably won the league. But I don't want to keep doing that. I want to test myself as a manager on this game and go for a completely different challenge. And this is going to be that. This league ain't the best. It's got a team in it that is super rich. Um, and we haven't got anything. I've got nothing. And you're going to sell that in a minute and really put my skills of this game to the test and kind of make them any better. And I just thought it was perfect. In Egypt, still kind of in the Middle East. Also, it's in Africa. So, you know, you've got options to play in African competitions as well if you do take the club on. Or I might just have it as a bit of a gap year, do a bit of archaeology while we're here. Even though I know you'll hate that, I'll absolutely love it because I'm a massive history geek. History-wise, you can see, pretty shit. And uh, they've won a regional group one division. One of the best nicknames in football, the Nile Crocodiles. Now, as one, I'll talk about a bit more in a bit. It is on the Nile and it is steeped, absolutely steeped in history. We've got no fierce rivals because nobody cares about us. Only cost you a pound for a ticket, six pound for a season ticket. We've got 162 season ticket holders. 
Now facility wise, you've seen it outside. We play in the Aswan Stadium, really hard trying to find a good quality picture of it. Um, but it is a 20,000 capacity. There's a lot of state half decent stadiums in this country. Just don't think they fill them. Um, it is owned by the council. We've got below average train facilities, poor youth facilities, basic youth recruitment, average academy. Yeah, we're, we're not we're not the best, I'll be honest with you. Financially, I started out with 142 grand, um, but nothing to spend and wow, the values of players and stuff. I mean, I've got staff men members on 30 pound a week. This hat cost me 30 pound. It is a different, it's worlds away from bloody where we were in Qatar, but, and they were shocked I wanted to go for the job as well, to be fair, but it is what it is. I wanted to challenge myself and I'm buzzing for this. I can't wait. It's something different. You don't always have to challenge for titles. One thing I was going to try and do my absolute best was to improve the staff, um, get rid of them all and just get the best in. They won't be the best in the world, but hopefully that we can make them the best in Egypt. So I'll get, get close to it. Now this is my squad arranged by value at the start. Um, as you can see, my best players only worth 53 grand. If we switch to reports and just show you some of the star ratings, obviously, does that really matter? Now we have got a great player there, Hussam Ibrahim, who is only 17 years old. Says he's a striker, but he's more of a, an AMC. And I, I did have a couple of half decent players. A quick look at the current champions, it's Pyramids FC, and I never heard of him until recently. Um, when I did a story last year, you might have seen it. Uh, Pyramids were part of that, and they are super rich. He says okay there, but if you take them over, they've got like 30 million in the bank. They usually have so much money, they are so well backed. Another very good team um, who've won the title multiple times, probably one of the biggest teams in the country, is Al Haile Sports Club. Don't know how you say it too much. Uh, they're an old team though, so great kits. So, yeah, there's, there's some good clubs here, and I mean, like I said, this might just be a gap year. We'll see how you guys feel at the end. We'll see how it all goes. Now, we quickly started losing money. Um, I did sell a couple of players. I managed to raise about £36,000. Woohoo! Uh, and, the, and the board do at some point give me 100 grand to help with running costs, but I mean, finances are piddly. Well, like I said, I stripped the staff and rebuilt it, and I managed to put together a pretty good one. They're not, they're not great. The only guy I kept was me assistant manager, who I think's okay. I mean, he's judging players' stats aren't great, but, you know, his mentals are pretty good. I also managed to um, get a few extra spots as well. So I've got three scouts in and a chief scout, and they were going to be massive to me because as soon as the reports started coming in, they were going to be very helpful. These are the competitions we're in. Now, in, in Africa, there is two continental ones. They've got an African Champions League, and I think it's like a Confederations Cup, maybe like a Europa League, I think. Um, obviously, we're not in any of them. Probably never going to be in any of them. Now, of course, they have made a few additions, but we are favourites to go down. <laughs> or one of the favourites to go down. Al Ali, uh, favourites to win the league with the Pyramids, and they are just, them two teams are just way better than everybody else. Here are the rules for the league. I'm not 100% sure why their prize money is different there. It does seem a bit weird. Um, I see the bottom three go down. That's the Confederations Cup, which I guess is like the Europa League. I guess, because it's the second one behind the Champions League. Um, now, it's the same size league as the Bundesliga. I'm going to play 34 games, obviously the cup games as well. I can have three foreign players uh, in the squad, so that's why teams like the Pyramids will snap up all the best Egyptian players. I tried this bit of a formation out with a Volante, and we won, but they weren't the best team. And Even though we created a lot, I don't know. I felt like I wanted to keep experimenting. I tried a 4-1-4-1. A bit of a Leeds tactic. Again, we played really well, but again, it was against weaker opposition. I stuck with it against tougher opposition, and it was a nil-nil. So, yeah, I thought maybe try something else. There's something else that's a bit out there for me. This is something kind of far. I've never played anything like that, and it didn't work. We ended up playing Zamalek again, so I went back to this one because I quite liked it at times. But it didn't work, so, yeah. I had to make a choice, and I got offered this job. They generally come to me and offered me this job. And that geezer took it instead. And I wanted to play you know, a tougher opponent. Last game. Um, and they came up, couldn't say no. Because obviously they turned the job down. And I thought, sack it. Go back to the tactic I love. My Tame Valley tactic. What can that do? Well, it beat him. Now, again, we didn't create the chances, but it won. And I just thought, why change something if it ain't broken? This ain't time for change. This is time to be a boring bastard. This is You've got a philosophy. You've got a style of play you love. Stick to it, man. Stop doubting yourself. So I brought in a lot of players, some for the youth, some for the first team. Spent nine grand on one player, a load of freebies, and a couple of loans. 
best I could do. So <laughs> I'm going to show you the best first team 11 I've got. Oh, the at the club is my best keeper, Karim Ho Hamed, 18 years old. At left back, I've got Walid Allah on £475 a week worth four. He's on more money a week than he's actually worth. At right back, I've got a guy called Hamed Ayman, Ayman, 32 years old. At centre half, I've got Mahmoud Shabana, 31 years old. And looks pretty good. I thought I was pretty happy to have this guy. Signed on a free by the previous regime. It's Emmanuel, Emmanuel, uh, Ghanaian, 20 years old. In the middle, I've decided to keep this guy. And um, they loaned him out last year. Four star player. I don't know why. Maybe it was to help with wages. He's 26 years old. And I think he should be pretty good for us. One of our own who I've decided to give a chance to from the youth team. It's Mohamed Morsi, 18 years old. Loads of potential. Why not? This is Hassami Ibrahim, who gets loads of interest over the year, wants to leave, yada, 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 go to a bigger club. But when you look at his ability for the club, we are, I can't let him go anywhere. On the left, we've got a guy called Gebna, Egyptian, 30 years old, can cover in multiple positions. Um, de Decent-ish. On the right, we've got Omar Aldahi uh, from Yemen, 26 years old. Again, got apparently got good ability, bit of acceleration, bit of technique. Up top, my favourite striker was Badar Musa, who's from Palestine, 27 um, years old. Again, acceleration, I think he's finishing, looks half decent. Now, the guy I bought for nine grand was Omar Ghali, actually from Qatar. Um, one of the players my scouts came to me, and they're going to come to me with a few, and I, I might make a couple more signings. Another player was Fidel Sheriff, who I picked up on a free. Um, I th again, I thought he was quite good. Now, this moment in time, I'm calling in talks with Joseph Diallo, who's from Ghana, only 17, but he's one of the my scouts came to me and said, get this kid, freebie. Um, and I looked at him and I think he looks more fleshed out than anything I've seen in my squad. So let's be honest, it is a setback from where the way my career was going, but it's something that's got the juices flowing for me. It's a side step, a backward step, maybe a three steps backward, but it's a challenge. It's a team with nothing really, where I can maybe come in with my tactic, get better staffing, do everything that I believe in when I play this game and see if I can do anything be successful I'm under no illusions you're not going to win a league or a cup or anything like that so we've jumped forward to January around the halfway point and we'll get stuck into the cup and we come in at the second round we played El Alamein SC yeah. uh, just about winning that next up another tough game in a way again uh, this one we won in extra time <laughs> Gebner getting us two late goals, getting us back into it and winning it for me. Absolutely amazing. Jump, jump for joy moment. On to the next round and we were away again against another regional team who we just about managed to beat, even though on paper they were better. We face another Premier League team in the next round who have got freaking brilliant kits. These kits are amazing in Egypt. On to the league. Get the right tactic, get the staff in, you can do well. Fourth. Now, will it stay this good? We'll see. But it was fourth. Uh, and we'd actually managed to pick up some freaking brilliant results. I mean, maybe I'm actually not that bad at football manager sometimes. I just felt like I really wanted to challenge myself. But wow, we have pulled out the back some cracking games. And the ones I want to share with you is the Pyramid game. This team has got millions and millions and millions. And we drew with them. We drew. We drew with the biggest and oldest team in the country. Now, obviously it's not perfect, it's not full greens, but should we be that good? Possibly not. We have picked up some fantastic points, been on some great little runs, um, and yeah, I've got, to, I've got to be honest with you, at this season so far, at this point, I've had the most fun so far in the whole series. Now jump forward to April and we played that other cup game against the team in the same league as us, beating them 2 0. Pretty, I'd say, comfortably. The quarterfinals of the cup against the Military Production Sports Club. What a weird name for a the team. They're only 15th in the league. Um, again, no, got some pretty cool kits. But four months on, where are we in the league? Well, it's starting to get tough. We haven't really got the strength in depth. We came out the blocks, had some great results, um, but we are slipping. But I still think we're playing pretty well. I don't feel like we get annihilated every week and we find ourselves in nine, which is still massively, I think, respectable. So since we last looked, I've played six games in the league and only won one, which sounds bad, but the games are still close. I don't think like we're getting absolutely annihilated. Obviously, Drew only got beat by a goal by then, away from home. Won that, obviously. Only got beat by a goal by then. 
drew with Wadi Degler, uh, and then we've just been beaten by military production, but only by a goal. Again, that money keeps dipping. Um, I mean, what year is it? 27. When did they have that much money? How's it just gone? No idea. Now, all throughout the season, to be fair, there's been three times in the news that they've said there's going to be a takeover. And I don't know if that's because I've become the manager, the computer kicks into gear and goes, oh, let's give him a new owner. And each time the chairman said it's rubbish and I don't want a new owner. I didn't want someone to come in and give me some money. And I'm genuinely falling in love with a couple of these little crappy ass players of mine. It is a lot of fun. So um, I think we jump forward to the end. Let's just get through it, eh? Well, they might have beat us in the league, but in the cup, they couldn't beat us. And in front of a whopping 390 fans in a 20,000 capacity stadium, we beat them 2-0. Pretty close game, but we got the goals and got ourselves into a freaking semi-final. A semi-final, I thought we generally had a good chance of winning. I really thought... We're going to a final here. This is going to be insane. I don't know how people will react to it. They're going to think, fucking hell, boo, bloody hell, another final. Uh, we didn't make it, though, but to get this far with my team, I was buzzing. What about the league? Well, we've got one game left to play against the team that's already won it. The biggest club, probably. The most historic club in the country, away from home. That's going to be the live com in today's episode and unfortunately it's kind of meaningless in a way although we finished fifth out of any chance of getting into any kind of continental football but we were close i mean this team should be scrapping for relegation they finished 15th last year on 29 points just like the team we finished 15th this year i've come in and doubled the points i spent nine thousand pounds and all i've done is i've got my beloved tactic and I've made better staff and obviously I've made human decisions over computer decisions throughout the season within games all that kind of stuff and very proud eighth best defense in the league and I was very worried about my defense I'll be honest with you so they definitely did better fifth best attack uh, scoring 56 goals nowhere near the top two teams but you're never going to get near them two teams what a cracking little team I do have arranged my average rating obviously I brought in some players some on loan I got rid of kept one there um, but let's have a quick look at some of the good ones we've got Emmanuel great little centre half had a fantastic season we've got Mr. Ibrahim Hossam the guy who can play up top but he played mostly as an AMC um, great player though now obviously he gets loads of interest he wants to leave the biggest team in Egypt want him if I do stay here, probably not going to be able to keep him. And that's the struggle this kind of club's going to have. But coming in for a season doing this, I think it looks good on my CV. I'd like to know what you think. So here we go. We're away from home. And yeah, the odds are stacked against us here, to be fair. Um, I think we had a good result against them, didn't we, earlier in the year? We drew with them. But obviously, they're champions. But maybe, you know, maybe their men mentality has gone off that now. We've won the league. Maybe they'll switch off and we can just get a cheeky result. But I have been shot by a few players. There's a guy in the middle called Omar Magadi. He's from Libya, who looks all right. He's a decent pass with the ball, but he came out of nowhere this season and had a good year. Done some good training this year. We've done um, got my set piece takers doing the right things. I think, you know, them little boring things in it um, where you can and be successful. And you cannot argue that this has been a successful season for Aswan. Now, if I can squeeze it in at the end, we're going to have a quick catch up and see how the other teams I've been manager at have been doing. I've kept them leagues running. Hopefully they've all carried on really from where I've kicked off but here we go Musa go on lad right here they come but yeah they look like an old team don't they that always win the league and it'd be interesting to find out really what they think or what their fans think about a team like Pyramids coming out of nowhere getting backed and competing but I bet it's made it a bit more exciting because when we looked at the history it looks like they dominate Musa Musa no way 1-0 but I think you can tell they're a big club because they can fill their stadium and we can't 390 fans in a 20th out, honestly. Stupid. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I mean, like I said, I think I've done well here, but really what can I do? I've got some thinking to do. I think I'm probably, probably maybe going to ask you. We get two. Can we kill the game off? We shouldn't be, really. We shouldn't be. There's been so many times I've come away from a win and gone, how have we done that? How? We shouldn't be. But we have. Here they come. They're going to get back into it at some point. I would be massively surprised if they do not score. Here they go. Boom. Hamed Mohamed Ali. How many Mohamed Ali's are there in the world? Free kick. Can we get back? Oh! <laughs> I can't count us out. I love that. I, I, I do like the fact that when you stick with your own little philosophy and tactic, you, you feel more... I personally feel like you're imprinting you on the game. And I feel like I've imprinted myself on every team I've been at. And 
I keep just seeing that and I love that. 2 1 at half time against the champions. As one, as one, as one. There we go. Second half has kicked off. I've made no changes just yet. I don't feel like I need to. Why? We're winning. We'll see how the game goes. We'll see how it goes. Um, yeah. 2 1. <laughs> I will say though, if you're new to my channel or old to my channel, don't forget, catch up on the Team Valley series. Still loving that. We've got a good couple of seasons left in it. Hopefully, we're going to be uh, moving into a new... Well, we are. We've got a new stadium in the works. Um, definitely need to play in that before that series ends. But it's just getting to a good place. And um, the next episode is a brand new season. It might even be season 14. Episode 48. You, If you've not got into it, you think, oh, there's loads of episodes. You should think of it like Netflix, where you can just binge watch. Oh, here he comes, NASA. Thinking of space all of a sudden. Great finish. Great finish. 25th goal of the season. Pick that bad boy out. Oh, we've dropped down to six. So, yeah. <sighs> That'd be gutted. I like the idea of finishing fifth. Just nearly there. That was pretty cool. But game's not over. We'll see what happens. Come on, boys. We don't give up. We don't give up. We don't give up. Oh, my God. <laughs> Is that a trick? I'm enjoying this because you're getting to kind of see the character of this team and why some games are so close. Why even against so-called better opposition, we can still put up a fight and going forward, this tactic, I think, works. Even though it doesn't always create 30, 28, 40 chances. I'd rather be in with the shout really and create a lot of crap. But um, yeah, I'll do that. I'm not that bothered. I mean, we shouldn't really have scored three away from home against the champions. So I will take that, Mr. Musa. Right, I've made another change um, on my full backs. You know what? Let's do that. Bring the Sheriff on. R that reminds me of Team Rally because it used to have a play called the Sheriff. <laughs> but can I hang on here? I've dropped back to balance as well and give him some encouragement just to try and get him to concentrate. We're looking tired. Come on, time. Come on. This is like winning a freaking league of a cup, but beating the champions away from home in the last game of the season. Guy from Palestine getting an hat trick. Of that, champions of what? Not the champions of us. They haven't been able to beat us this year, have they? <laughs> there we go. There's a final look at league table. And we did, of course, finish in fifth. A point ahead of the National Bank. What a victory against a team that's won the league. Happy days. Well, they went on and won the Egyptian Cup, beating the team that knocked us out in the semis. So, fair play to them. They've done the Egyptian double. But that also makes that game against them just then all the more sweet. I've done it, really. Now, they've also won 11 African Champions Leagues. And you can see for a period... They won a ton of them. They didn't win it this year. The Sundowns did. Quick look through my previous clubs. And this is the first one in Hungary, KBSC, who have stayed in the top flight around mid-table. So I'm pretty proud of that. Love my time at Vardar. And in the second season, their manager won the league. So they went back to back. So that continued. Although this year, they finished third. It doesn't say on here just yet on their graph, but they have finished fifth, Al Rayan. So yeah, a bit of a drop down for me winning the league and they've of course sacked the manager for it well there you go that is a year in Egypt done are we going to be staying are we going to be going well I know you want to go you're sick of the tent but I love it here I love the culture it's been amazing but I promise you I'm going to put a vote out there and if they decide for us to stay here for another season I'll get us an actual place to live no more digging for pots I promise so we'll put a vote out we'll give the guys some options all the people who are watching at home on the vlogs I know where you want to go I'll go anywhere. I don't care. I'm just loving the adventure, loving the journey. I feel really proud of what we've done this year. You are the best travel partner. You're also the best cone placement officer. And I love you long time. Oh, no. I love you too, man. We're like brothers from another mother, aren't we? So we'll see, eh? It's going to be exciting to see what the vote says. Well, thanks for sticking with me, mate. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. Oh, come on, let's have a man hug.